Hello, wonderful. It is Sarah, and we have a very special guest today. This is my husband, and several of you guys had questions for him and questions for guys who are not toxic and all that kind of stuff. And so we are so excited to have you here, and thank you, honey. Well, thank you for having me. This is exciting. <laughs> I'm sure this is good. This, this is my first Facebook Live. So this is, it's yeah. Really cool. He's so used to me doing all the crazy lives and everything from the car. Um, but thank you so much. So many of you guys have asked questions for him. And so, but first, so I'm going to use my phone to answer all your questions. Uh, and you can type questions, but several of you asked questions previously. So, babe, what, tell us who you are and what you do. And Wonderful. So, Ben Witt, I am married to Sarah. And we have three wonderful kids, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. Uh, we live Most in Tennessee. Days. Most it, days. It's fantastic. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Some days. It really is. As far as my work goes, I am an IT executive. I'm vice president of business operations, and I, I handle finance, procurement, contracts, asset management, mergers and acquisitions, and communications. So I've got a wide portfolio that I handle at a Fortune 200 company. So lots of negotiation skills that are that are fun and have been helpful to me and uh, and all that kind of stuff. So lots of people had questions for him, such as, where do we meet? Ooh, wonderful. <laughs> so when we met, Sarah and I were out at a Mardi Gras party in downtown where we live, and she looked like a technology challenge female at the time. She was holding her phone up in the air, me being part of IT. I felt the need to go over and try to help her out a little bit. Um, as far as helping out with her phone situation, that didn't work out. But <laughs> ultimately, we did work out, so that's wonderful. Yeah, I had broken my phone that day, and so he came up and he was like, you don't seem like you're having a good time. I was like, I'm not having a good time. My phone's broken. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, but it was good. I, that is how we met. Um, and But what people don't ask is, who I was when we met. There's lots of people who say, how did you meet your husband? But hardly anyone says, who was I when I met my okay. husband? And which I think is a better question because... Well, the one thing I would say first off is that uh -huh. when we met, and it goes to who you were, is I took some notes that very <laughs> night, okay? So that I would remember everything. And all the notes are still in my contacts today. So if I pull up wifey in my contacts, it still has everything from the very first night. If I remember back, it said, librarian, uh -huh. has a protein shake at like 8 a.m. in the morning, I still have a shake right now. It's happening. I have not worked out today. But I still loves to travel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, loves Belize. Yeah. Father is a preacher. Mm -hmm. So all those mm -hmm. things are what I recall about mm -hmm. her at that very time. And the one thing that got me hooked was the travel because I absolutely love to travel mm -hmm. all around the world. Um, as far as my work goes, it's taken me to many different countries and I've been everywhere except for Africa and Antarctica mm -hmm. as far as continents go. Mm -hmm. So that one got me. Um, with the father being the preacher, I guess that could go either way because <laughs> either she, she's very, very religious, which I'm not very, very religious and, and would our two thoughts around the subject really mold together or not. But I think it's worked out great. And she does have a wonderful moral compass. And so I had kind of a good foundation right from the beginning around who she was, just having those little tidbits of information. Mm -hmm. What I didn't know when I first met her is that, you know, she had been in toxic relationships mm -hmm. and there would be, you know, some conversations and challenges along the way as we started our journey together. Which some people have asked questions about. So we'll get to that piece. Um, but the, what do we think about each other? I mean, I really think it was that sense of adventure. Oh, absolutely. That we talked about. Yeah, yeah, sense of adventure, travel. I think that that's continued throughout our relationship. And like I said, that hooked me right from the beginning. But we still do dates all the time. That's true. We still do like little weekends time. away mm -hmm. as often mm -hmm. as possible. We'll, we'll go anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, we got married in Europe, in Italy. So, yeah. We love doing that together. Yeah, it's fun. And uh, I made a joke because one of the questions was like, well, how do you keep Sarah hooked or engaged or whatever? And he was like, oh, we're married. I don't have to do that anymore. And I was like, rah, rah, you know, so <laughs> whatever. <laughs> we went on the date last night. But it is Absolutely. important to 
in a healthy relationship to keep pursuing each other and for it not to in a healthy relationship not toxic but you know for the rules not to change as soon as you get married and oh we go on dates and adventures before but now life's just boring right that's how well we it's not going. just the dates and adventures we also talk a lot yeah. like we have a lot of discussions mm -hmm. whether they're they're surface not all the time sometimes they're very deep but we talk often so it's not like we're in two separate corners all the time we're always engaged. Yeah. And I think that's the key thing, whether we're in the same house together or not, because for a long time I traveled mm -hmm. a significant amount for work. And so I wasn't around, physically mm -hmm. at least. Mm -hmm. And then COVID happened. We're together all the time. That's right. I'm on travel ban until at least, at least January. I think now maybe March. I'm not sure. Oh. Yay. Okay. Um, okay. So another question. Let's start with dating questions. You want to? Sure. Sure. Okay. Burr, burr, burr. Healthy men, what are healthy men looking for in a relationship, in your opinion? Oh, someone that's smart, sexy, fun, kind, caring, giving. I think that they want someone that is their own person. I think Ooh, that's really important. That. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't just be the extension or the accessory of one partner. I think that's important. In one of the questions when we were talking last night at dinner about this, I said, you know, when you think about like a prop or a person, which is exactly what he was saying, you know, if someone's looking for a prop, a house cleaner, a trophy wife, a whatever that crop could be in different situations, um, a healthy person is looking for a partner. That's right. Right? Yeah, right. Absolutely. So what do you think unhealthy men look for? Ooh, yeah. Someone that they can mold and control, I would think. Mm -hmm. they, they don't want someone that's going to necessarily be at the same level that they are. I would think a toxic person would want to be the one that's in charge of everything, guiding where things are going at all times, bend that individual to their will. Sounds fun, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so someone asked the question on the dating side, um, should you give your guy, um, give a guy your number? Well, it depends on how well you know him. I, I don't necessarily think that the very moment you meet someone, you should just give up your number. I think you should have a little bit of a conversation. But what if they're really cute? I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, you can have a I think, I think that mm -hmm. you should get to know them a little bit. Okay. At least through some level of conversation. Just because you think someone's cute, you give up your number, well, then they have that. I assume you can just go ahead and block them, sure, in today's world. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a bad sign. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. you've got to engage them in some way other than just the physical looks, which everyone can be attracted to physical looks, but there's got to be a little bit more to it as well. So I want to have a bit of a conversation at least. So how would you start, like for advice for females, like if a guy's just there, you meet them at work, you meet them wherever, at a Mardi Gras event, whatever it is, you know, if they're like, oh, I don't want to like go up and put myself out there and be vulnerable, what advice would you give them for that? Like on how to start that initial conversation? I think it's really important to have situational awareness for one. So depending on where it is, would kind of dictate what you should or should not do. Okay. Now I think it's, if you're in a situation where you think, Hey, I'm never going to see this person again. I'm at a random party at a place, or Hey, maybe you're shopping for towels at Bed Bath & Beyond. I don't really know, but you could go up to them and kind of engage, make yourself available in a physical way so that they can see you at least be in the same physical areas where I'm at, not in a physical way about touching or anything, especially during COVID. Six feet apart, don't forget. So I, I think that you can be a little more aggressive in a situation yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. If it's a work event or something like that, I would definitely be more cautious about your approach. Um, I know I am, you know, HR related type things. I mean, you, you would not want necessarily fraternizing with people, but if it's any standard situation. Well, I hope you are not because of HR, but because of your not sheer, me. I'm your just, sheer I'm just love saying. for me. Of course, but I'm just saying <laughs> workforce-wise. I'm thinking about okay, no, my don't, organization, don't, my people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got to be careful with those kind of things. But yeah. if you're in any average environment, I think that you can put yourself out there through subtlety as well. Uh -huh. Again, put yourself in the line of sight. Smile, a head nod, whatever. End up close to them. You don't have to necessarily be the ultimate aggressor in going over and just starting up the conversation and needing to be the one in control. But you also can't hide in the corner and just hope that they come to you. 
you oh, know, no. everything. Do, do not expect that at yeah, all. Yeah. If you're meek, you're over in the corner, you're not making yourself available, you're not out there in any way, the probability of you meeting someone is lessened tremendously. When you're sending out signals that say you don't want to meet someone, when you're putting yourself close to them, um, whatever the situation is, then you're saying, kind of sending out signals like, maybe I'll be interested versus... That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Good advice. Okay. Um, <laughs> where does a woman find a non-toxic man? And this is a very popular question. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, that's, that's the truth. Uh, if I could help you out with that, I would. I'd love to give tips. But the truth is, is that you can find a toxic person anywhere, whether it be a library, church, bars, anywhere. Mm -hmm. There's toxic people living amongst you. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where you can meet the perfect person and I never experienced online dating whatsoever. So sorry. Well, okay. And but when we were talking about it because people like want this like secret like spreadsheet, like, okay, if you use this dating app, then you'll never find a toxic person because it's all screened. And it's a really passive approach because what you're saying is I don't want to have to do the work of my own screening. I don't want to have to do the work of being vulnerable. I don't want to have to do the work of this. And like all the good stuff in life is on the other side of the work, right? In our situation, we were both putting ourselves in situations to meet new people, right? Mm -hmm. Over and over and over until we met each other. And it was like, yes, it was by chance, but it was also a practice of putting ourselves out there, putting ourselves in social situations that we were able to meet people. Um, of course. I mean, if you stay in your home, mm -hmm. you don't reach out, you're not networking, you mm -hmm. can't expect to find the right person. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was like thinking about what like guys were saying this and was, he said, oh, it's a little bit crass, but, but and somebody he was watching uh, was talking about it's somewhat of a numbers game. It is. I mean, if you go out and meet 100 people, mm -hmm. let's just say that you end up having a connection with only four of them. Okay, mm -hmm. that's only 4%, but mm -hmm. it was four people that you had a connection with and thus had a pool to choose from. If you go out and you only meet four people, six people, and you have a connection with one or two of them, well, guess what? That person that went out and met 100 people, while they went through uh, maybe a lot of work and putting themselves out there, they met twice as many people. Mm -hmm. They had a connection with twice as many people mm -hmm. at that point that they could potentially move forward with. Well, absolutely. And... And it's less vulnerable when you think, I have the ability to meet new people. I have the ability to put myself out there. I have the ability to create situations where I'm able to find someone versus like, oh, I, I finally was brave enough to get out there and I've got like this, these two guys and like I've got to choose between these two guys and only, and one of them has to work out that has to be the love of my life. And then you end up putting up with bad behavior because you don't have the, you don't feel like you have a net to choose from. Yeah, and so you're, you're really what we're saying here, I think, is that it's the fear of rejection. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. you, you can't be afraid to hear the words no. That mm -hmm. it's not going to hurt you. It, it really isn't. You're going <laughs> to be like okay if they tell you no. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. You'll get over it. Eventually, and I'll help you. Uh, no, you won't get over it. Uh, so, da, 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 da. Ooh. what would you think your biggest turn offs and deal breakers would be if you were in the dating world now? Oh, yeah, that's that's easy for me. Number one, smoking. Can't stand it. Won't stand it. Drug use, uh, really of any kind. I'm not in favor of. And then people that abuse drinking, mm -hmm. social drinking, things like that. Sure, that. that that's okay, mm -hmm. but heavy drinking, abuse, and in, in that realm, those are the three major deal breakers. For me. And knowing him, and his, uh, he's very responsible, and many of you are looking for a responsible partner, the real umbrella of that is someone who is taking care of himself, physically, emotionally, financially, right? Like, whatever that is, like a grown person who's not like, is not his life is not like an out-of-control 20-year-old, right? Um, but someone who is, is that, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Does that feel true for you? Um, it, it's true. You know, I've got three things in life that I want to be, okay? That would be happy, healthy, and successful. And success can take many forms. Maybe it's you know, personal goals that you have for yourself. Maybe it's with family. Maybe it's with friends. 
Maybe it's with your career. I don't know. You set those goals and to be successful. But being healthy is super important. And if you're doing the three things that I mentioned, odds are you're probably not going down the right track of health. And so that's really important. And fortunately, you know, we've been in a position where our family is everybody's healthy, relatively speaking. So that's good. And then being happy. I mean, I think that's what you strive to achieve together. I mean, and if you have those three things and you can build upon them, I think you'll have a, a great life. Well, and it's managing yourself and not the things you mentioned are can be not always, but can be coping strategies to cover up some darker and deeper stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you get in a situation, it's like, Oh, guess what? I have all these coping strategies. It's like, Whoa, subconsciously, it's like, what are they trying to cope from? Like, what are they trying to cover up? Are they trying to drink away their problems? Are they trying to whatever? The only way they know how to handle stress is smoking or or whatever else. Like I said, not every circumstance, but the many, um, which is probably not what you want to go for to find the right person. Um, Oh, okay. I asked Ben about this specifically. And I want you to hear it. Everybody like, listen to ears, tune in. Self-deprecating <clears throat> humor. Part of female culture tends to be making yourself small or like, oh, yeah, but, 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 but my hair looks horrible today. You know, the guy gives you a compliment. It's like, oh, yeah, but my hair looks really bad today. Or, yeah, but this is happening. Or some type of self-deprecating humor. And... I would let you know. You want my opinion on self-deprecating? Yes, because yes, I work with Great, people. Great, fantastic. Myself. So yeah. mm-hmm. had a fair bit of experience with this, whether it be personal dating relationships that were BS, that would be before Sarah. That's a time where we don't really like to talk about, so we'll, we'll be kind of quiet about that. It's the whole before <laughs> Sarah thing. And, and then, you know, working relationships. Mm-hmm. And, and I see it in both realms, and I don't like it. Why? Mm-hmm. Because it tells me that they're not confident you know, they're looking for attention in some way, but it's negative attention. And I would never try to strive for negative attention. Mm-hmm. You got to come up with other ways in order to promote yourself mm-hmm. in a positive way. I think that's really, really important that you have a certain image that you're projecting and it can't just be negative. Like the hair example mm-hmm. you gave, I don't see how that, that that's great. What are you going to get laugh out of someone? But ultimately I don't think people are going to respect that. And certainly a partner, that you're trying to have a longer term relationship with, I wouldn't think that they would want that, especially if they're non toxic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, toxic right? people love it. It's like, oh, great, she already feels bad about herself. I can like swoop in and like secretly making her feel even worse or whatever, right? Uh, so, this is um, it's really bad strategy and, and something I talk to. When you talk well about yourself, toxic people are like, oh, she's less likely to be able to be taken advantage of in many circumstances. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hate self-deprecating humor. Don't do it. Uh, annoying things girls do on dates. Right. Well, I already mentioned smoking and things like that. You don't don't want that. Number one. Number two is talking too much. Um, talking too much about their friends, things like that. And I think number three would be using their phone. What? People being yeah, on mobile like devices. If you're out on a date. It's really bad. Yeah. You're supposed to be there concentrating on that individual, not worrying about what else is going on in the world. So mm-hmm. those, are, those are my three things. So this is a question. Um, a lot of the C, I'll read it exactly like she said. A lot of C-level execs have women saying they will spoil them and treat them like God just to get to their money. Have you seen a lot of that in the business world? And did you ever want all that attention and spoiling? I think that's everywhere because there's a lot of people that put on this face of desperation and for the executives out there, I mean, they need to recognize that, that it's probably not someone that they want. Um, It's not something that I want because I don't need someone that's just there as an accessory and want to, want to take advantage of people monetarily. We don't want that. (laughs) You you want someone that's going to be their own individual person Mm -hmm. that has their own individual plans, goals, and successes. I mean, Mm -hmm. that's really what you would strive for, not just someone to just to have. Have a room. Yeah. 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 And, and I want you to hear what I, what he says you should lead with in dating, right? Um, he did not say lead with homemaking lead with mothering, lead with, no. um, you know, 
desperation lead with, oh, I just, I just want to heal all your childhood wounds. Oh, I need to heal. Because I see so many women, they're really caring. And you're all multidimensional. You're all multidimensional. And learning to be that, you know, whether it be adventurous and have goals and take care of yourself, it's already like three dimensions, which makes you automatically more interesting to the right person. But when your only go-to or whatever is, um, uh, like, let me just love you. Like, I just, I have, like, all my heart is yours. And I just want to love you. And just, you can love each other. I'll take care of you and all this, all this. That, that comes across, like, you might think it's coming across as caring or loving or whatever. And it's really coming across as? Well, I think it's coming across more weak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And someone that. A toxic person can take advantage of mm -hmm. more yes. easily, yes. for sure. Yes, yes. So speaking of toxic person, part two, toxic people questions. Mm -hmm. um, will people keep pushing the boundaries of the relationship if you let them? <laughs> oh, absolutely. People will press it as far as you allow them to press it. And, you know, that's the old saying, give someone an inch, they'll take a mile. Mm -hmm. That's it, and especially from a toxic person, that's really a goal of theirs, is that they want to influence you in a negative way that's beneficial to them. Mm -hmm. And they're always going to do it mm -hmm. unless you stop them, mm -hmm. unless you have the fortitude to stand up and say, no, I'm not having this anymore, and, and change the way that you're approaching the relationship in your life. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing, if you want to prepare yourself for healthy relationships in the future, not only is having boundaries and standing up for yourself helpful in all areas of your life, it's also helpful in attracting a partner because if it's just, you know, if I hadn't met Ben and it was just like, I just let, you know, and I've improved in this area obviously since we've been together, but even like, oh, I just let everybody walk all over me all the time. You know, I'm just a doormat. You know, I need you to protect me because I can't take it, you know, I can't take care of myself. Like that is not a cute energy to bring into a relationship. No, it's not what I want at all. That, um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, how can I fix a toxic guy is the question that someone asked. Oh, interesting. Why would you want to fix a toxic guy would be that <laughs> retort there. But yeah, yeah. I would say you can't fix a toxic person. You should not try to fix a toxic person. That's probably the number one thing that you should not do. Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah's the expert in toxic relationships, not me, but that seems like a huge red flag. You should never start there because the bottom line is people don't change that much. Yes, mm -hmm. over time from adolescence, they mature, right? But I don't think they change who they are at their core. And if they're going to be toxic and they've proven to be toxic, don't try to change the way they are. Mm -hmm. I think people make mistakes far too many times in their dating relationships and choosing their partners and think, oh, you know what I could do? I could just change this about him. Or I can Speak change the church that he goes to. Yeah, and yeah. make sure that he stops playing sports. I'll make yeah. sure he stops drinking. Uh -huh. I'm going to get him to stop hanging out with his friends. I'm going to get him to stop, stop trying to change people. People are who they are. And you need to accept them for that. And if you want to be with them in a partnership, then that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But do not expect to have um, a change. At least not a big one. No. And, and truly... When I, you know, as we entered into marriage, committing our lives together, I, I can't think of one thing on either of our ends that we thought, oh, well, once we get married, this will change. I no, mean, I was like the opposite. I was like, I don't want this to change. Yeah, me too. So I don't know that I want to get married because I don't want this to change. And we were yeah. bought into that whole philosophy. Yeah, yeah, we were very bought into that philosophy. And, you know, when it's like, oh... He's traveling for work, or I'm traveling for work, or this or that, and even some of those things, like even some of our outside friends. I think it was kind of a conversation of like, oh, but yeah, once you're married, are you gonna like throw the hammer down on that? And I was like, what? Like that seems like a horrible That's idea. Enough. But <laughs> and it would have been a horrible idea, and um, and I'm just really thankful that you have not asked me to change anything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um. Uh. Da -da -da. What do you think about toxic female partners? And do you think guys are much better at setting boundaries or in your own life or setting, you know, you think? I've had toxic female partners in the past and 
No, I don't think guys are great at setting boundaries either. I, I think that it's a plague of both sexes, if you will. In my relationships, I mean, you get into them. And then I also thought at one time I could change people. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm just telling you from experience, this is what I think, that you can't change people. And I thought that I could. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm smart enough to do this. I'm clever enough. I can, I can make this all work. No, uh -huh. you can't. You yeah. can't make it work. Yeah, yeah. And it's both and you ends. Should. And you should. Right. No, the the key is, yeah. in my mind, is that you've got to recognize it. And then you have to make a move to change and get out of that relationship. Mm -hmm. That's the key thing. Mm -hmm. And so ultimately, that's what I was able to do in several instances. Because, you know, if you're putting yourself out there and you're trying to have relationships, it's not always going to work out. But you, again, you can't hide in the corner. So. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, the getting back up and trying again. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. Next online. I don't think we've had any questions in the group. Oh, we have. Oh, hi. Mostly. Hellos. Hello. 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 Yeah, Hello. That's funny. Um, I see. Somebody was cracking up. They said pet challenge. That was from earlier. That's fine. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So the next piece of the pie uh, is Sarah questions. Several asked people. Oh, this is really fun for me to ask. Yeah. Um, what first attracted you to our Sarah besides her studying good looks? Um, yeah, we touched on that. It was literally the sense of adventure. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what I liked. And she's got a great disposition, wonderful, outgoing personality. I was instantly attracted to her. I truly was. So I kind of had to hold back a little bit because I was like, yeah, this girl's great. I just thought that she was wonderful from the get-go. We had our second date scheduled by the time we had our first date. Like, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I yeah. called her and I said, okay, so we got this first date. We lined it up and I said, I'm going to go ahead and we've got to put a second date on the books. I'm really confident here that we're going to have the second date. And so we did. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so we ended up having a date. Our first date was on a Thursday. Our second date ended up on a Friday. Our third date ended up on a Saturday. So yeah, I made great. a joke that no one got a third date. Like that was like, uh, you know, that was a thing. That, that was the pinnacle. That, yeah. that was it. I had to cross that mountain and I was able to do it. So I guess after date three. Good to go. Yeah. And, and I had really decided on him pretty early, like even before, before that, um, we had pushed off our first date, um, for, <laughs> because I had children that I could not, you know, I didn't tell him at the time that, but it was like, Oh, all this stuff with kids, I'm going to push back our date. And it was also Valentine's day and I was playing piano for this thing. I've been super awkward. Um, and, but I think I'd already really decided about you, um, before I didn't know we were going to get married necessarily, but I, I definitely felt we were going to be together for a long time, even before our first date. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of the interesting things is we were talking about, we were joking about like telling people how we met and I said something along the lines of, uh, oh, we can, I don't remember what I said about meeting how we met, but you said, oh, we're going to tell people that like I saved a child from a train or, you know, something, it was something silly along those lines of like, you know, some great rescue adventure, just texting for our first date. And he said, well, why don't we tell them you saved someone? And after I had gotten, it was just like joking fodder, but it was like such a quick point for me because he didn't have to be the hero. He allowed me to be, you probably don't know this, and he, uh, he allowed me to be the heroine in my own story versus me watching him be the hero. Um, it's probably, I never even thought about it, honestly. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, probably didn't know that. Um, yeah, that's why I got the third date. Um, what, what? Okay. Why do strong, confident women scare many men away? Well, that should not scare away non-toxic men. Honestly, if a man is secure in himself, he should want a strong, confident woman. I know that I wanted a strong, confident woman. I mean, that's what I was after. Why would you not want that? You want someone to be happy with themselves. Right? I was like, happy, healthy, successful. As a woman, that's what you want to project mm -hmm. to others. And, and so from a male standpoint, if I'm in the dating pool, that's the dating pool I want to find. It's like, okay, well, where can I find these women? Mm -hmm. That's what I would be after. Not the other group. Now, if you're toxic, I would think, oh, yeah, I don't want to try to engage with her. She's really going to fight me on this. I might not be able to control her quite as much. Isn't it just horrible? Like when you, when you hear it said. Uh, but sure. And 
So kind of leading into that question, like how do you deal with my success? Well, I mean, for me, I'm happy. I, I want you to be successful. That's a huge, huge step, I think, in your maturation and your business. It will make you happy mm -hmm. and successful. So again, I go back to those, those pillars, if you will. And I'm always supportive. I think that that's, that's the main thing. You have to be supportive of your partner at all times. I, I would never feel bad because you had success. I would only be happy for that. And in fact, I want you to be wildly successful mm -hmm. all the time. Uh, if you're more successful than me, that's great. Mm -hmm. I'm always going to be there and be supportive. Yeah, and then obviously you heard from the beginning, he, he has his own success. So it's not as if like, He's hanging out on my coattails by any stretch of the imagination, by any stretch of imagination. Uh, and, but that's, you know, a real attitude. Probably he's been even better at it than me, but like, you know, my success is his success. And, and he'll say things like, gosh, like, why wouldn't you want your partner to be successful? Like, that doesn't even make sense. And, you know, financially successful, uh, you know, publicly successful, you know, whatever else it is, um, which is, not always. Yeah, you define it. You have to define what that is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, for sure. Um, okay. I love this question. Do you think it's a woman's job to make her man feel like a man? No. Definitely not. Um, a man has to work that out for himself. You know, if a guy has issues internally, it's not your job to fix it, bottom line. Now, I'm not saying go out and emasculate no, a man no. by completely trying to take over, boss mm -hmm. him around. Then you, you start becoming the toxic person mm -hmm. within this relationship. So I wouldn't recommend that, but it's not your job in any way. Mm -hmm. Well, and there's the example of like two people holding hands versus one person powering over. You see that? One person powering over another person. And it doesn't matter if it's like a male powering over the female, female powering over the male. Um, it's not a partnership. And when you're looking for a partnership, there's not power, there's not as many power plays. Yeah. Or many power Yeah, the, the power dynamics, you know, you don't want a significant shift. You don't want one person too high and the other too low. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely not, Ben can tell you, like when we're out in public or something like that, and I'll walk by a restaurant and I'll say, I just heard this woman's like ripping apart her husband. She was talking so ugly to him. Like, yeah, it breaks my heart just as much as if it was like, the, the sexes were reversed. I hate, 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 hate hearing people talk badly about their spouses. Mm. And, and even that self-deprecating behavior, like when it's these jokes and it's like, oh, you know, uh, yeah. Well, it's at the other person's expense. Yes, yes. Well, it's not the right thing to do. It's not kind. And it's Don't like, do it. and like, who would brag about what a like idiot their partner was? Like, why would you do that? Like, you know, if I'm sitting here and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm such a dummy. I have to do this and this and this. Yeah, like, why, did, why did you marry him? Then? Yes, it like, doesn't make you look better. Um, so, yeah, definitely not not your job to make a man feel like a man. And also practice courtesy and kindness. Don't emasculate anyone. It's horrible. Um, da, da, da. What were you looking for in a wife? I don't know that I was looking for a wife. He was not looking for a wife. When he said he's getting married again, everybody, even at his work, was like, I can't believe we're getting married again. Yeah, I told everyone I wasn't going to get married again. Mm -hmm. that, that's the key mm -hmm. thing. But, you know, I already spoke about the things that I would look for in someone. But, uh, no, I, you know, I was not looking for a wife. And but I met you, and that changed my mind. I mean, that's the key thing. Because mm -hmm. I thought, oh, well, this is completely different than everyone else. Mm -hmm. And so I started changing my perspective. And I think that's why we were so specific going in of like, okay, we're going to get married and live together, but not everything's going to change. Like we were both very big on that. And there's been a couple of things that have come up and it's like, okay, but just like when we were dating, I wanted to still be like that. And we're both really committed to that. Um, yeah. That's what makes it easy. Uh, he did not say somebody to dump on. Somebody to mother me. Somebody to deal with my darkness. Somebody to help me with my mental illness. Somebody to uh, blame for my drinking. Somebody, like, all those things. He would never say even those. But I just want to be super clear on, like, what some of these people are looking for in a partnership. And 
partnership and and what he said and just be really clear I mean, he he i was not looking for someone to save me you don't mother me at all i mean you said mother but you really don't mother me at all you, you give me nice massages you. which i'm very thankful for <laughs> when you were i love it it's when great. you were sick yeah. i brought yeah. you chicken soup that's true that's great that's true i fold your socks you do do it yeah yeah appreciate that it's very motherly uh, but no i'm really big on like i got kids I hate when people make jokes about like, um, oh yeah, the boys, and they're talking about their sons and their husbands as if they're all boys. Like that is a that is my pet peeve. I think it's disrespectful to the men, um, and uh, I just think it's not not good, right? It's like you want a man, not someone you have to a grown person you have to mother. No way. Um, <laughs> somebody asked this question. We were kind of giggling because we couldn't come up with it. Um, how do you guys divide household responsibilities? Yeah, I mean, at our house, we kind of share the responsibilities. The one thing I would say is that when it comes to outside work, that's more in my realm. Mm -hmm. When it comes to laundry, Sarah handles that. And then everything else, it's really shared. I mean, maybe I'll do laundry occasionally. Maybe she'll help outside a bit as well. But overall, we share responsibilities throughout the household all the time. It's not as if, fine, Sarah does everything inside, Finn does everything outside. It really yeah. does not work like that at all. We both cook, we both go to the grocery store, we both yeah. clean up after dinner, and it's never a discussion. Like, I mean, hey, can you go to the grocery store today? Like, that might be a discussion, but like after dinner, it's not like it's your turn to do the dishes. Well, I'm really OCD about the dishwasher. Other than that, we're, so we're good. It's annoying. I mean, it's lovely. It's That's great. the only thing I'm annoying about. I pack obviously. the dishwasher, and like, I put the stuff in, and I'm thinking more of like a time management, and Ben is thinking more of like an energy management, as in, how few times can we run the dishwasher? And I'm like, well, I want to have the dishwasher done by now, you know, the dishes done by now so that I can unpack them before we have to get the kids' soccer. Well, that's what all the slots are for, is that you fill them up, ultimately <sighs> yeah. then you start the dishwasher so you don't run the dishwasher four times a week. Mm -hmm. You only run it two. Good. Yeah. Good. So, <laughs> that's our discussion about our big fights about our big fights about household chores. <laughs> it is him redoing the dishwasher after I, after I do it and saying, oh, we can do it more. Um, uh, is it hard for Ben to understand what I've gone through? No, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I've been in toxic situations myself that I alluded to earlier. And when we first started dating, there was a lot of conversation around mm -hmm. that. And I just tried to listen, mm -hmm. I tried to understand what she was going through. And I think I could from most perspectives. I mean, I didn't like the fact that she went through it, um, made me angry sometimes. Sometimes. But, yeah. yeah, I'm being messy with that. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. So, you know, it was a challenge early on, but uh -huh. really as long as you're supportive and you listen, I don't think you can get through those type of things. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget at one point when we were dating, he kind of made a statement and he said, hey, I'm not your counselor. And I was like, you are right, you are not. And that is a boundary I had to put personally, you know, just because I'm thinking it does not mean... I have to tell him that in, in, in that realm, you know, of, of trying to be a better person and trying to heal and trying to make sense of things. Um, he didn't have, it became, it would be fair to say it had become too much. And I really respect that statement. And I, I remember, it wasn't me. It wasn't like, you're always talking about this. Or it was just like, hey, I'm not your counselor. And I was like, fair and right. You know, and you can kind of sense that, that sense of boundaries and that respect for each other. Right? He could say something so simple, I could self-reflect and say, you were correct, you are not, you are right. And that was it. it. There was no fight after that. There was no, but I made mean, you go. You know, it was, that was it. I, mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that. But no, no, I do remember that. It is a fair statement. You probably could have said it even earlier. <laughs> it was very kind. You're a very good listener. But it made me respect you, and it made me kind of check myself without degrading myself or beating myself up or feeling bad about myself it was just like hey you know yeah because i think everyone has limits i mean yeah for sure as you should yeah yeah, yeah. um okay da, 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 da. how do you show sarah respect not just with words but truly respect her by being supportive mm -hmm. by trying to be the best husband that i can be the best father i can be always be there for her listen i mean i think we're hitting on the same themes mm -hmm. over and over again mm -hmm. really and so 
I hope that that respect comes out in my behavior towards her, my words towards her, my actions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ben doesn't do the flip. So many of you guys have heard me talk about like when something, back, like if I said, hey, I'm really upset because you unloaded the dishwasher, you know, the wrong way, wrong way, you know, then there's never the flip where he then says, well, I wouldn't have unloaded the dishwasher that day if you had told me, blah, 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 like that never happens in our relationship, like never, never, never happens. He might not agree with what I'm saying. He may say, well, but that's not what happened. But he doesn't flip it on me, and I don't flip it on him to, like, make each other feel small or confused or to blame for things that aren't their fault to blame. So that's what I would say, pay respect to me. He's also very even killed. Like, I can be like, Aah! sometimes, and he's always... That's true. Mm -hmm. That is very true. <laughs> but it keeps things interesting, right? That's, yeah. It's super fun. Of course it is. <laughs> yeah. But he's very even killed and it's like, um, which I need it. Like when you think about what suits you, you know, um, well, we have very different personalities. You look at our personality types, we're almost polar opposites. We said on paper, we were right? a horrible match. Yeah. We were truly a horrible match on any type of paper that you would see but we just suited each other so well and that and that's the terminology i used and so we didn't go into it like we knew what for the in every way that you came with marriage like we knew kind of what we were getting into you know it wasn't like there was like all this happened all of a sudden it was like expecting the other person to change or being in a different yeah. situation or um we just suited really well but yeah personality type it said we were so the worst good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's how we were like the worst match ever. Um, <laughs> this person, which I almost like, I was like questioning my friends, like, should I break up with him? Uh, the Myers Briggs said we were like a horrible match. Like, uh, and then I was reading narcissist like articles, and I was like, Ben has like big muscles and a nice car. Do you think he's a narcissist? And uh, you probably don't know that either. Uh, but really getting to that place, and you know, I remember my hairdresser, like, I was getting my hair cut, and she said, Oh, what do you like about your new boyfriend? And I said, he's always nice to me. And I started crying. They are getting my hair cut. And you know, she said, well, Sarah, isn't a relationship, aren't they supposed to be nice to you? And I said, well, maybe. But if you've not had that in the past, then yeah. you really appreciate it and do not take advantage. And I think because of both of our pasts, it's really hard to take advantage of each other. Like we don't, we're always grateful for peace and we're always grateful for kindness. And we're always grateful for that partnership. And, and we're not looking to take advantage of each other. No, so. no, no, no. It seems like, ugh. Um, how do we discuss our disagreements? Well, number one is we don't have a ton of disagreements. Yeah, we really don't. We really don't. There's maybe a couple of subject areas where we may not agree 100%, mm -hmm. and we discuss them maturely. Mm -hmm. We, we sit down and have conversation about it. And if we don't agree on something and we feel like we're not getting anywhere, we just step away. Mm -hmm. I'll go do my thing. She'll do her thing. Mm -hmm. We'll come back and discuss it again later. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we really avoid blow-ups. Yeah, I think that that's key. Uh, you don't want to have those situations that become really, really erratic, very emotional. I mean, that's something I'm big on. It's oh, just trying to yes. keep the emotion yeah. flat. Uh -huh. if, if all possible, and focus on the facts. That's mm -hmm. that's my approach. So. And I, I want to give him some real credit right now. Those of you who have coached with me, and I'm like, he probably doesn't know this either. And we have these like you have these. So I'm learning a lot today. Is what you're telling me? You told me multiple things. You told me. They're right? all really nice things about you. <laughs> we should go to dinner tonight, and I'll tell you more nice things about. We are going to do that. <laughs> all right, we haven't decided yet. Um, Really and truly, I mean, he has made me such a better coach. The, the fact that his personality is so opposite, and he is, he in the past, he's worked as a project manager, he's worked at managing people, and he is just like, what's the solution? Find a solution, fix the problem. And you don't get all the feelings connected to it, like just fix the problem. And that has affected my coaching in such profound, profound, profound ways. That is not normal in like the coaching realm or like 
therapy realm or any anything that because it's like well how does that make you feel no it's like from your childhood is that and he's just like what's the problem is there a solution and that has influenced and been so strategic and monumental in how i coach we had the group coaching for one woman right before this and that was exactly what i did i said okay let's get out of the storm like what's the problem what's the end game what's the solution and just being able to solve problems for people very very easily um so you yep. influence that for me too great <laughs> okay let me see if there's any other questions i know you guys have been oh somebody asked if you would hmm, this is interesting would you date below your economic situation sure yes uh, in fact for me i mean that that wasn't a factor i mean i want people to have their own success i want them to strive towards things and have their own goals mm -hmm. like we mentioned earlier but the socioeconomics of the relationship were not of a major importance to me at all yeah they're really not well they're asking if they can clone you i don't know can you i, I want to know that's that's great if somebody could find out that'd be good <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and this person talked about setting boundaries dozens of times with an ex um yes debbie that is manipulation if you're setting boundaries tons of times and they just don't respect it yes yes uh, th that that is a absolutely toxic situation uh they all know i'm an enfp ben is a estj which describe an estj for us Why? you remember no thank you yeah, he probably doesn't remember. Yeah, so it's very like task oriented, very like get out of the emotion and into the problem solving, which has been a fabulous influence to me. Um, so I'm gonna say yes, we are very blessed to have found each other. Um, I'll answer that question later, Harriet. Um, yeah, and I, I'm so when I first started this journey. Um, I was really hesitant to even like talk about my own life or talk about our relationships because um, Beth asked the question, thank you for the vulnerability. It's hard to believe that there are healthy relationships out there. And when I, you know, rewind the different parts of my life and I just thought, well, that's just not for me. So all these people who are in healthy relationships, I basically hate them and life is not fair. And I'm just going to figure out other ways to be successful. I was very angry. I was very frustrated. I felt like it could never happen for me. Um, and wounded. I was just wounded. I was really, really wounded. Um, and uh, so I was very hesitant to like, as I went further along our process, I was really happy and we were successful. We've been together how long? Five years now? Yes. Yeah, five years. Um, gosh, it's just really kind of amazing how little our relationship has changed in five years. Like, if you took this version of us, like, we've grown as people and in our professional lives for sure. Like, as far as like, well, it's even better. Yeah. It's yeah. Even better. Yeah. But definitely not. We had one set of rules at one point and a different set of rules at another point. No, so, it's been consistent. Very consistent. Yeah. 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 Um, and, you know, and really putting mm. myself out there. Ooh, I want to answer Renee. Okay. I love Renee. Right. Hi, Renee. Yes. Good. Yes. Okay. Is an independent woman a negative thing? I would say absolutely not. Everyone needs to have. Their own independence you need to have the things that you care about and that you love that are separate from your partner i mean it's great that you can do things together because you want to build that life together but you've got to have even your own friends oh gosh yeah right yeah, yeah, yeah. you've got to be able to go out and do things on your own mm -hmm. to be completely independent mm -hmm. not just in personal but also work related as well i mean mm -hmm. hopefully i don't know mm -hmm. it can be difficult maybe you have a family business and things are intertwined or you work with your spouse but i mean really you want to maintain your independence. Mm -hmm. I think that's a key to success as well. One of the keys to success in our relationship is also not expecting Ben to be all the things for me. I do have a lot, I have extremely high connection needs, right? Like I need to be around people. Every personality test I take is like, like my people, like I need people like 100% like off the charts. That would be an incredibly amount of high pressure to put on one person. And for him to like, every time I have a bad day, he has to be my sounding board. 
he always is, but it's usually been kind of like filtered through some friends or something, other situation. I've had some other ways to process before I bring it to him. Sometimes not. Sometimes he's my first step. But within that interdependence, independence conversation, don't expect your partner to be all the things. I wish I could say that a thousand times, and I believe it so strongly. Don't expect them to be all the things. They will always disappoint you if they have to be all the things. They need to be certain things. There's roles, you know, Ben feels in my life that no one else could feel or should feel. Um, and then I also don't want to put all the pressure on him to... Clearly, we already said that I'm not a counselor, so... <laughs> That's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, even in dealing with past relationships or certain things that pop up in past relationships, you've got to put that pressure on a partner to have to fix everything for you. That is just huge, 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 huge. Well, I think we've covered a lot. Any any last closing words? For me? Well, hey, thank you all. Uh, again, this is my first Facebook Live. Very exciting. Very fun. Hopefully, we'll come back and do it again sometime if Sarah will have me. <laughs> that is. With this I don't group think of I'm getting rid of you anytime soon. Yeah, but you might not have it on Facebook Live. You never know. That's true. But uh, thank you. Thank you all for your time today. Thanks for tuning in. Bye, guys. Bye.